Hi everybody, um, this is a bit of post-editing uh, footage, a bit of audio thrown in here just so I can explain something to you guys. Um, I didn't add much imagery in this video because uh, it was just so much content and quite honestly I was really tired and I've been a bit busy lately with my university stuff. So um, don't expect to see any sort of visual representation for what I'm talking about. But I explained it really well, so I hope you can understand it. And if you don't, uh, let me know what you don't understand in the comment sections, and I'd be more than happy to help you guys out. Um, but yeah, enjoy this video. Cheers. Hi, my name is Jack Mather, and you're watching One. Uh, it's been a while since I've uploaded a video, but today we're going to be talking about classification in the uh, scientific world, especially in zoology uh, and biology. So this is something that I was always a little bit confused about when I was a bit younger, and I, I think that it's a very important topic to get across about classification. So um, basically, before 1650, the study of, of living organisms was much more localized than it is today. Um, however, when, when the early explorers started to kind of send home vast collections of exotic plants and animals, uh, previously unknown to science, it soon became evident that without some sort of ordered system, um, the situation would rapidly become uh, chaotic. So um, uh, John Ray was the first person to attempt to classify the natural world. He organized organisms based on their form and structure or morphology uh, using lengthy names that incorporated a brief anatomical description. But it was Carl Linnaeus who devised the system of classification that we still use today. Like Ray, Linnaeus made use of morphological features, but used them to group things together rather than to describe them. He set up formal categories on the basis of shared morphological features, creating a hierarchy of increasing exclusiveness that extends from kingdom to species. Over time, scientists have expanded the system, adding levels such as domain and cohort, and subdividing others into infra, super, and subcategories to accommodate our increasing knowledge of different animals. Despite these revisions, the Linnaean system has remained fundamentally the same since its inception 250 years ago. I am also going to uh, interject here and apologise for any background sound. Um, there's a lot of stuff happening upstairs at the moment, I apologise. So, um, let's get into the actual classifications. So, um, the, 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 mo the smallest and most specific classification without delving too much into uh, phylogeny, is species. This group comprises similar individuals able to interbreed in the wild. So Indian rhinoceroses, for example, breed only with one another and not with other types of rhinoceros. Their species name, Unicornis, refers to the single horn. Um, I should also add that a species name, which comes after the uh, uh, genre or, or genus title, should, always, uh, should never be capitalised. So it's always... Uh, either used in, um, I forgot what it's called, that slant text. Oh my god, I can't remember. Uh, uh, anyway, don't capitalize it. So, um, next up we have genus. Aristotle was the first to use the term genus to group things together. It was later adopted by Linnaeus to identify a subdivision of a family. The genus rhinoceros contains the one-horned rhinoceroses. Uh, larger than genus, we have family. A family is a subdivision of an order, and it contains one or more genera and their subgroups. Family uh, Rhinocerotidae, for example, comprises those perissodactyls, the odd-toed ungulates, that have horns on their noses. Going even further than family, we have an order. More exclusive are the different orders into which a class is subdivided. Each order contains one or more families and their subgroups, the Perissodactyla, for example, are plant-eating mammals that walk on an odd number of toes. Without meaning to rhyme, going broader than order, we have class, a taxonomic level made up of orders and their respective subgroups. Class Mammalia, for example, comprises those chordates that have a single jawbone, the dentary, fur, and mammary glands. Going beyond class, we have phylum a major subdivision of the animal kingdom made up of classes. Phylum chordata, for example, comprises all animals that possess a precursor of the backbone called a notochord at some time during their lives. Um, so that's actually the second largest classification for uh, organisms in biology. 
without, again, delving too much into uh, phylogeny. And finally, the largest and most broad and outreaching uh, classification of biology is the kingdom. This is the highest level of Linnaeus's hierarchy. Each contains living organisms that work in fundamentally the same way. Initially, there were only two kingdoms, plant and animal, but today there are five. And those five are, of course, the plantae, which are plants, fungi, which are fungi, animalia, which are animals, bacteria, and uh, protoctista, which are protoctists. Um, in fact, now that I'm saying that, I'll go through all of the classifications and then I'll read out the examples of them. So I just did kingdom, so we'll go down to phylum now, which is the uh, periphera, which are sponges, chordata, which are chordates, snidaria, which are snidarians, uh, platyhelminthines, which are flatworms, nematoda, which are roundworms, mollusca, which are mollusks, and the anthropoda, which are the arthropods. I just said anthropoda. Arthropoda, sorry. Uh, then we've got class, which is even below phylum. That's the mammalia, which are mammals, aves, which are birds, reptilia, which are reptiles. Although, technically, you could say that aves and reptiles... The aves shouldn't exist. It should be just reptiles um, because birds are technically dinosaurs and dinosaurs are reptiles, but I'll go into that in another video. Then we've got the amphibia, which are the amphibians, and the chondrichthyes, which are the uh, fishes with cartilaginous skeletons. Then we have ostichthyes, which are bony fishes, and the myxini, which are hagfishes. Uh, that was class. Now we've got order. Scandentia, tree shrews, chiroptera, bats. Polydota, which are pangolins, carnivora, which are carnivores, perissodactyla, odd toed ungulates, primates, which are primates, and lagomorpha, which are lagomorphs. Then we have families. Uh, I think it's probably going to be best for me to pick one organism for this because, or at least one group, because if I go through all the families of each order, it's going to take me a, a lifetime to get through. So I'll, I'll choose um, the rhinoceros, as I've already mentioned it. So uh, we'll go from Perissodactyla, the order Perissodactyla, and um, then we'll go down to three families from Perissodactyla. Those three families are the Equidae, which are horses, the Tapiridae, which are tapirs, and the Rhinocerotidae, which are rhinoceroses. Going below there, we can go into the genus section, and we get four genera of rhinoceros. Uh, rhinoceros itself, which is the one-horned rhinoceroses, uh, Diceroranus, which are the Sumatran rhinoceros, Ceratodotherium, which are white rhinoceroses, and uh, Diceros, which are black rhinoceros. Um, many of those are now extinct, unfortunately. Then we go down to species, uh, below genus, and we have two from the uh, genre rhinoceros, the rhinoceros unicornus, which is the Indian rhinoceros, uh, which I mentioned earlier, and the rhinoceros sondagus, which is the Sumatran rhinoceros. So that was a classification. I hope you've learned something. I know this video was probably a little bit longer than it needed to be. Um, I apologize if I sound a little bit weird. I'm just very tired. I've had a really crazy week with university and stuff like that. Um, but I hope you're all doing well and I hope you're keeping safe. Uh, where I live, the coronavirus stuff has just uh, uh, spiked up again. And it's now peaking, I believe. So we're not out of this yet, at least I'm not. Um, yeah, but if you've learned something in this video, uh, let me know in the comment sections down below. I really do appreciate it. We just hit 200 subscribers the other day, so that was awesome. Uh, it took you guys long enough. Jesus Christ, it's been two and a half years. I'm joking. I, I, I've told you before that I don't really care about that stuff. Um, I just appreciate everybody sort of listening and, and learning something about classification today. So, um, yeah, uh, subscribe if you want. You don't have to, I guess. And I will see you all next time. As always, cheers.